Today I want to help you understand a basic concept when it comes to sizing a solar panel array for your home. Now I'm personally going to be doing a DIY setup. It's going to use 12 of these Helion panels that are 360 watts a piece. But even if you're not doing DIY, which is going to be most of us, you still need to understand a few basic principles when it comes to sizing the correct system for your home to make sure you're getting the right size system, not paying too much, but also getting the right size system so you can replace your monthly power bill or at least the electric part of that power bill. Why we need to understand that? Because the solar panels are usually denoted in how much power they can produce. Specifically, like I said, this is a 360 watt panel or 0.36 kilowatts of power. And then when it comes to this power bill, usually you'll have a trailing 12 month bar chart that's gonna show you how much energy you consume throughout that month because you need to know the average energy consumption to make sure you're sizing your system correctly. Now the simplest path to take that overall trailing 12 months of how much energy you've consumed is check the link in the description. You can go over there and enter in your monthly power bill and then a few different pieces of information on where you think the panels will actually be located. For instance, are they gonna be on your roof? Do you have any shade? What is their orientation? Orientation, are they pointed due south? You enter in all that information and in just a couple minutes, you'll get a small dashboard showing you the size of system denoted in kilowatts. And then also what is the estimate after your tax credit for that system? Now, if you wanted to go the professional install route and that cost is kind of in the ballpark of what you're thinking, they can connect you with installers right from the same dashboard as well. But I do advise you to keep educating yourself a little bit just to validate what you're seeing on the dashboard or what you're hearing from the installers. So let's use a little bit more of a visual display of connecting power and how that relates to energy. So often electricity can be a little confusing. So it's better just to use an analogy between the difference of water flowing out of this hose and collecting in this bucket. So the solar panel behind me, power would be the similar to flow rate coming out of our hose. So this would be the power, let's say it's 345 watts, and then that'd be going into the battery, the EcoFlow behind me, and filling it up just like this hose is filling up the bucket. So then let's say clouds come in, and we're still getting flow out of the hose, and the panel would still be creating, maybe it'd be less than 90 watts or 80 watts, so it's gonna take much longer to fill up the bucket just like the panel would take much longer to fill up the battery. So we might now understand or have that relationship between power and energy, but when it comes to actually looking at your power bill and understanding how much energy you're using monthly or over that last 12 months or year, how do you connect that with the power rating of a properly sized system? Well, if you look at the units themselves, power is in kilowatts and then energy is in kilowatt hours. So the difference is hours or a unit of time. So what that means for your specific location where you're installing the system, we need to understand what are the number of hours on average per day that we would multiply our system rating. Specifically for me, it was 11.3 kilowatts. Now, if you start to think about it, that might be a little bit overwhelming. You know, cloud cover obviously makes a huge impact. Your season makes a huge impact, but don't worry, you don't have to do all that homework yourself. You can reference a link in the description to a map that will show you across the United States, depending on where you live, how many peak solar hours are you gonna get per day? Just because the sun rises in the morning and then sets at night does not mean your panels are producing the maximum output all hours of any daylight. Really, there's only that core hours in the middle of the day. That can be as high as about six hours if you're in Southern California or over in Arizona, or as low as 3.5 hours in the Pacific Northwest, like in Seattle. So you can take that 11.3 kilowatts for my system, multiply it about 4.3 hours a day is where I'm at, and then that's what's gonna give you your kilowatt hours per day. So how much energy are are you actually producing per day? Taking the power output multiplied by time, 
the number of those peak hours for the location that I'm living in, and then that's gonna give me my energy output, and on average, I would like that to be meeting or exceeding what I am currently consuming from the grid or my power utility today. So I do not recommend just because somebody shows up at your door, a solar salesman, goes through your system, they might be sizing your system perfectly correct, but they also might be missing some things. So that's why it's good to have some of these basic concepts so you can actually understand what's being presented to you. But let me know down in the comments, what else are you guys considering to make sure you right size your system for your home? It probably goes without saying, this is a little more leaning towards an on-grid solution. If you guys are thinking off-grid, there's many other variables we need to understand, especially on the battery and energy storage size, since you're basically your own utility. Two additional pieces of information I think would be good for you to understand. One is the concept of net metering. You can check out this video right here and we'll dive quite a bit more into net metering to help you understand that. And then you can check on your own location and utility to see what the current policies are on net metering. And then number two, many of us over the next five years, if we haven't already, we'll switch over to one or maybe even two electric vehicles in our home. And that is gonna raise the energy consumption demands dramatically. So check out this video right here. I'll walk you through how to size out how many more panels you're gonna need for those vehicle or vehicles and the average number of miles that you're driving per day. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.